Goosebumps is rated GB7 because it may be too spooky for Goosebumps fans under 7. Hello, Goosebumps fans. So, let me just do this right quick. This will be the prototype. I got to do a run, run wound. Special thanks to Marco and crap <laughs> well anyways special thanks to those two they actually did, they're the first ones who gave a thorough-ish book review on slappy beware this is gonna contain spoilers so if you don't want to hear any spoilers run stupid run but there's this amazing bombshells that is coming out of it and apparently it's gonna be two stories just like how it was in Horrorland. So, just so you know, run for your life if you don't want spoilers. Other than that, stay. Let's talk. Alright, so here's like a prototype because I can't really say for certain because I need to think because this is a lot of stuff I have to actually listen to. So, the few facts that I got from them. Number one is Blackwell the Magician has a nephew. They both lived in a, in a house somewhere in some sort and their house actually got burned down though right their house actually was threatening to get burned down and it's like familiar don't you think it's like hmm what we've heard oh well she just keeps on trying to talk to me guys it's like anyways what i've heard was what we can see here is that we got freaking franz mahar over here franz mar yeah, so we got Franz Mar, who did the same exact shit, where it's like, oh no, the townspeople are gonna, the village people is gonna burn you because they learned that you have some witchcraft crap that's just going on here. And you had the sacrificial dummy, and it's like, oh good lord, please, don't make Double M show up again. Don't do this, man. It's like, I think he's gone. I think he's gone. But anyways, <laughs> but anyways, so... Either way, their house get threatened to be burned down. And technically, no, I don't think they burned. No, they were burning his dummy. So they, I, I think later on, their his house got destroyed or something. I forgot, but either way. So, no, not really. Either way, there was fire in both scenarios. And there was a puppet tormenting them. A, a dummy or whatever tormenting them. Versus... They threatened to actually burn his house down, Darkwell's house down. So lo and behold, he decides to make a dummy and a slappy. And I most likely will have inserted or maybe we'll listen to it right now. The beginning part of the um, the voice, whatever, yeah, it's like, you know, the audio track. So we'll listen to that. And then after that, we'll come back and talk more. Scholastic Audio presents Slappy Beware, a Goosebumps special edition by R.L. Stein, read by Joe Freya and R.L. Stein. Darkwell's hands trembled as he gazed at the doll. He tucked them under his robe and held his breath. The words he had just spoken rang in his ears. The only sounds in the cottage were the crackling of the fire and the soft breathing of Isaac asleep on his cot. Darkwell stood frozen in place, waiting, waiting for the magic to take hold. And then it happened. The doll's eyes blinked. They blinked once, twice. The mouth closed slowly with a soft click. Yes, the sorcerer whispered. Yes, it's working. You are alive. The old man took a deep breath and forced his heart to stop racing in his chest. The doll blinked once more and turned its wooden head from side to side, as if testing it. The painted lips moved up and down, making a soft click each time. Speak, the sorcerer commanded. Can you speak? The doll raised a wooden hand and touched the side of its face. It blinked a few more times, moving its head up and down, and then a soft, harsh voice rattled from somewhere inside it. Where am I? Darkwell cried out. Yes, yes, you speak. Where am I? The doll repeated. And then, in the same raspy voice, only stronger this time. Who are you? Who am I? The old sorcerer hugged himself, as if to hold in his excitement. We have no time for questions, he told the doll. They are coming to destroy me. But you are here now. You were created to carry out my evil when I am gone. The doll blinked. Its mouth dropped open. Evil? I'm evil? Tell me. Why am I evil? You are my revenge, Darkwell replied. My revenge upon those fools who do not understand how brilliant I am. The fools who would destroy me. If they succeed, I am about to perish. Perish? The doll repeated. But my evil will live on through you, Darkwell continued. I have cast a powerful spell. 
I have spoken powerful words to bring you to life. Listen to me carefully. I won't have time to explain it again. The dummy lowered its hands to the workbench and leaned toward the sorcerer. I am listening. From now on, Darkwell said, when the secret words are spoken, you will awaken and perform the evil you were created for. What does that mean? The doll demanded. What should I do? You will terrify people, Darkwell replied. You will scare them to death. You will make people scream and fright and cry, and you will make them your servants for life. For life? The doll repeated. I have given you a cute name, the sorcerer said, so that people will not suspect your true nature. Your name is Slappy, a name fit for a circus clown. But you are no clown. Instead of bringing laughter into the world, you will bring screams of horror. <laughs> Slappy tilted back his head and uttered a shrill laugh. Screams of horror! Father, that sounds like fun! Darkwell started to speak, but stopped. He heard voices in the distance. Through the small front window, he saw yellow lights flickering against the black night sky. Torchlight? Were the villagers approaching? Darkwell fought back the feeling of panic in his chest. There is more I need to tell you, Slappy, he said, his eyes on the window. I must give you a warning. Slappy blinked. A warning, father? The sorcerer nodded. The spell I have cast gives you great mind control powers, but beware of its one weakness. Behind Darkwell, Isaac stirred in his cot. Eyes still closed, he stretched his hands above his head. Is it morning, uncle? He called. Darkwell ignored him. Here is my warning, Slappy. You must do something evil every day that you are awake. If you are awake for a day and fail to terrify someone, the spell will end, and you will sleep forever. <laughs> the doll let out its cold laugh once again. This sounds like interesting work, he rasped. I will obey you, father. I will be evil every day that I'm awake. You have no choice, Slappy, Darkwell replied. If you fail to scare someone every day, you will sleep forever, and no words will be able to wake you. All right, so as you guys can hear from that, and hopefully if it wasn't copyrighted, you wouldn't have an awkward silence. But anyways, so it turns out that Slappy might have been a good boy, but he slowly turned evil. He slowly turned evil. And it's amazing that he says the fact of, oh, and you have to do evil every single day, or the, the magic won't work anymore, and there's no way to bring you back. It's like spoilers apparently he lied or it wasn't true i don't freaking know it might have been a lie but at first it wasn't a lie i would be like problem solved so that means that dennis would actually have not existed no more he only lasted until that night when the morning came the magic is gone from him because he has to do evil so the magic is gone from him, so he's not living at the end of the second book. Damn. Rocky, all the other dummies, they actually won't be able to be brought back because, well, again, you have to do evil. They haven't done evil. And plus, I'm pretty sure the sad part is like they get to have like, what, a bit of life, like a few hours of life and then game over. Or again, I think Slappy was their power source. And as soon as Slappy went down from exhaustion of being tickled, then the power just went gone. But still have to work on that theory. That means that for um, Snappy is fine. Goldie would have been perfectly fine. But I'm pretty sure Goldie won't be able to be affected by the curse because she's a rat now. So <laughs> spoilers on that book. Uh, let's see. Um, Wally is most likely still good, too. But of course, as you can figure, Wally being only in Slappy's Nightmare, lo and behold, that one, he was forced to do three good deeds or he'll be gone forever. So that's the reverse of what the heck this book is about. What the frick? Of course, that's the second part. The first story, all it was was the fact of looks like they because don't speak his name, but M.M. has a point that he was like, oh, well, Slappy's the template and there's multiple Slappies in the world. And it's like, okay, but sadly, we have no proof of that. Truth be told, there's no proof, but well, there's a little bit of proof. There's like at least three proof, two proofs of that, of Miss Wally and Snappy. That's the only two proofs. Maybe you could say Son of Slappy might have been a copy of Slappy 2 or Slappy himself. I still don't know. Of course, the good news is that we have the wiki, um, the wiki tribe, or I forgot what they call them. The wiki guardians, they will be able to clear this all up. It's like, yeah, go ahead, comment down below. I'm most, you're most likely to correct me on that one. But other than that, it's like, 
he kind of is right about the template, but the template, and it depends on if what I'm listening to and they listen to the audio book. So that means that if the audio book was wrong, that means that they were wrong, which means that what I'm about to say is wrong, but we're going to give it a go anyways. Mr. Wood has been reincarnated or basically he's been passed on as a template and there is multiple of Mr. Woods now. Has Mr. Wood been revived back for sure now? We don't know. All we know, they are under Slappy's freaking command, which I'm pretty sure Mr. Wood will be like, oh, what the fuck? But on the other hand, I kind of still like the idea of where we have the pedestal of Slappy was scared in the first book. Then Slappy's nightmare, Mr. Wood slash Wally in this version, he's Mr. Wood and Wally, the same person. He stood up to Mr. Wood for the fi first time ever because he has grown as a dummy and as a person and he's not afraid of you no more. He'll kick your ass. And now we get to the point of where now we're to the point of where not only is not afraid of you anymore, but now he is controlling you. Versus the other thing of where if he actually showed that he actually was alive, pretty sure that, oh, frick, I forgot to put those on. Oh, well, whatever. Anyways, I'm pretty sure that in this case, we actually have a stepping stone of showing that Slappy went from being afraid of Mr. Wood to being like he totally dominated over Mr. Wood now because freak him. Versus the thing of where it's like, well, it doesn't make freaking sense because, well, Wally and Mr. Wood are not the same person. We're just like. It only works if Wally and Mr. Wood are the same person. If he's a reincarnation, it only works that way. And I wish it could work that way because that makes everything meaningful versus like, look at this skinny little doggy. Look at him now. Roof, roof, roof. Look at him go. Not afraid of that master no more. He's not afraid of his brother no more. He freaking doing it, baby. It's like, that's how you really get things done. But of course, sadly, it's inconclusive, which is like, oh, well, son of a bitch. But at least, hey, it went from he being afraid of Mr. Wood to now he's controlling a bunch of Mr. Woods. Could actually like some development there being like, oh, man, this guy once feared me. But A, now I can control him. Whatever. And the second book, and it's like, yeah, the first one just ended with that one. I still need to have some more, like, you know. But this is just a prototype, so that's all I'm saying, prototype. This whole entire book basically screams how, and note, the second one, the reason why he reversed the words, which is like, reverse the words? Did, did they do that in any book? I think they kind of did, and that was how to put them to sleep. But that was only introduced in, like, Bride of Living Dummy, I think. So... I forgot. It's, it's hard to really truly keep up. But either way, he has earplugs and earplugs actually can fit him now. And well, I'm pretty sure that means either A, he put it in his back, which they're able to put, you know, his hand, they're able to put their hand in his back. Or B, we have confirmation now that's the horror world, horror land world. Those two horror land stories, or at least one of them is in slappy world because that means the compartment he hit the freaking recorder in be it like either a it's built into his body which he never used ever again or b it was just a small thing that he had in there and most likely still has it in there because don't make sense that he just threw it away he has earplugs in there too or he actually has it in his pocket his suit pocket i don't freaking know but either way it looks like he was able to save himself from being taken down which the only thing that was true is that he was able to put him to sleep. The only thing that was a lie was the fact of if you don't do evil for one day. Mm. But the only messed up loophole in this is like then you gave him the power to you say you gave him the power to control minds or some kind of crap. It's like, OK, well, that makes sense. It seemed like he been had that power. So we already know that power was established ever since like maybe Son of Slappy or what other one was it? And either way. But now we get to the point of where. <laughs> So where did the other magic come from? It's like, yeah, where did the other magic come from? Where did the other powers come from? Since we're now basing off this one, I don't know if we could even be like, oh, this is part of Slappy World because now it just bumps freaking my I'm Slappy's evil twin, the origin part to the curb. But you can also say you can piece it together and be like, this is before even Snappy existed. It's before he even existed. And it's like, oh, okay. Either way, I think I most likely took too long and I don't want to cut this, so let's see how bad is it. Oh, I'm a little bit good. So anyways, I'm going to end it here so I can actually have this for both channels instead of being like, oh, it's only on one channel anyways. Have a scary day. Have a scary night.